after writing two transformational books myself and supporting many other beings to do the same, I've become enthralled by the deep and mysterious magic that's activated when we choose to say yes to ourselves and commit to the book writing journey. Of course, we want to inspire change and new perspectives in our readers, but the transformation that happens as an author, both throughout the writing process and by actually releasing your book into the world is surprisingly potent. I know I've been blindsided in the most disruptive and delicious ways by some of the changes my books have brought into my life. Writing a book is like casting a spell. Although we can never be completely sure what's going to be unleashed during the process, we choose to do it anyway. This Unbound One is a heroic journey. Each book has the potential to be a magical portal, a doorway to a new world, both for you and your reader. Each book has a very specific medicine that it's here to share with us. And each book gives us the opportunity to alchemize the magnificent imperfection of our experience into gold. The truth is that anyone can write a book. We could all get a few thousand words down and put them together. But what fascinates me is what happens when we allow the book writing process to go deeper. When we say, fuck it, get naked and dive way down beneath the surface letting go of the shoulds and any need to be acceptable, sensible or approved of. What fascinates me is what happens when we make ourselves fully available to being transformed by the very act of writing a book. This is Unbound Writing and this is the process we'll be exploring together here in the Unbound Writers Club. I'm Nicola Humber, author and founder of The Unbound Press, and I help magical beings to write the transformational book they're really here to write at this time. I'm your guide here in The Unbound Writers Club, and the aim of this podcast is to help you to feel supported, encouraged, activated as you embark on your book writing journey. Whether you're a first-time author or have many books out in the world, my hope is that you will find something here to inspire you. Let's dive in. Hello, Magical One. It's Nicola here, and this is episode two from our summer series, The Unbound Archives, which is designed to really help you get into momentum with your writing, write in the most powerful way, creating interest in your writing, and also allowing you to complete your book and get it out into the world, because that is what we need, it's what we are cheering you on for. And this week we are revisiting an episode where I am talking about how to create a writing practice that really works for you because so many of the messages that we've picked up about writing a book are limiting and restrictive and feel really rigid to unbound magical beings like us. So let's talk about how to write in a way that feels amazing for you. Let's dive in. Here we go. So welcome to this episode of Unbound Women, a monthly discussion between authors at the Unbound Press where we dive into a particular subject or focus and just see what wants to come through. And this month we're talking about how to create a writing practice that works for you, which is such a personal thing. And it can really, I feel like it can kind of ebb and flow depending on where you're at and the book that you're writing. It can shift and change from book to book. So I feel it's always helpful to hear from other writers, other women, like what's been helping them and what they found as they've been writing. So if you don't know me, I'm Nicola Humber. I'm the founder of The Unbound Press and I'm an author myself. I've written three books and I'm joined by three Unbound writers today who are all at different stages of their book writing journey. Um, So I'm going to let them introduce themselves actually um and just let us know like where you are in your writing process and a little bit about the book that you're writing 
or you've written. <laughs> so, Alison, do you want to go first? Yeah, hi, I'm Alison and um, I'm a midwife and a spirit baby intuitive. And I wasn't before I started writing my book. Um, and basically, I'm at the point where I've written my book and I feel like I'm in the betwixt and between stage because the book is written. It's finished, but it's going through the last kind of editing and the rest of the publishing process, and it won't be ready for a, for a few months yet. So, it's, so I'm in the I'm in the I'm in the betwixt and between place. You are. It's going to be coming out in the autumn, isn't it? We haven't finalised yeah. the day. Do you yeah. want to share the title of your book? Oh well? yes. Yeah. So the title of the book is um, "Baby Talk to Me: Spirit Baby Messages for the Journey to Motherhood." Amazing. Oh. Really excited for it to make its way into the world. Thanks, yes, Alison. Me too. Thank you. Dine, do you want to go next? Yeah. Um, so my name is Dine, and um, I'm nearing first draft stage of my book, which is dealing with the shadow and dealing with integrating when our shit arises. And uh, there's a lot of stuff around this now, and um, it's all good. So what I've done is. I've made it into a kind of mythical tale so that it's it's like a whole world and uh, in a way to make it accessible but also in another way to uh, be able to express it how I want to express it rather than adhering to perhaps the accepted things yeah if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah absolutely uh, yeah I've been lucky enough to hear some of Dine's um, book that she's been sharing her writing in the Unbound Writing Mastermind and it is it's just incredible so again I can't wait I can't wait to read some of it because I've heard it and I haven't actually read it yet so I'm looking forward to actually reading it yeah. thanks Thank Diane and Karen and I'm Karen um, I am author of author of two books um, my last one The Divine Feminist came out six months ago today it's it's it's, it's oh. a book half birthday today um, oh I didn't realize yeah. that yeah, congratulations <laughs> me either until I looked at the calendar I was like this is serendipitous um <laughs> so The Divine Feminist is all about reconnecting to ourselves it's, it's digging past what we know of as being the imbalances of the world into sort of the deeper the deeper underpinnings of patriarchy I guess and and coming back to a place of that sacred balance and alignment for ourselves amazing so, and are you writing anything else at the moment, Karen? So I hoped you were going to um, avoid that one, Nicola. I was like, <laughs> I'm trying to write a novel. I have had this series of novels in my brain for years and I'm now trying to write a novel, but I'm finding that that, that is a, you know, in, in line with the topic of today's conversation, that is a very different process that I need. And it's one that at this point in time, I'm perhaps not as disciplined and as I'd like to be with it. Mm. So I'm very, very, very slowly writing a novel. Okay, okay. Well, it's going to be interesting with the different types of books and like Dino, where you're writing fiction as well. So let's let's dive in. And yeah, do you want to share, each of you share a little bit about your writing process, like how you approached writing, like writing the book for Karen, for you, writing The Divine Feminist, whatever stage you're at. Oh my god, I can't get my words out today. <laughs> oh how did you how do you approach your writing practice? I'm gonna shut up and just let you speak. <laughs> shall I shall I go first? So yeah, so thanks, could because mine was mine was quite the journey. Mine, I think I went through five or six different attempts to kind of formulate a writing process. And apologies if you hear noise in the background, my dog's just just popping around. Um and then they just didn't take hold. It was almost like sowing the seeds and then nothing was coming to fruition. Um and so what eventually worked for me was I just booked out, I think it was a month or maybe it was even just two weeks. I just booked out a period of time, didn't take any clients, didn't do anything, and sat on a beanbag with a pen and paper and just wrote this, wrote this book. And I was talking to someone the other day and I was saying, I wrote it with Shits Creek on in the background. And they replied and said, but why? Didn't you need silence? I was like, no, because there was some sort of inner saboteur within me that was going, you can't write this. You're not good enough to write this. So every time she started, I would go, let's just watch Shits Creek for 10 minutes. Let's distract her. And then we'll go back to the book. All is well now. We're good. So that was kind of me. I sat with the TV on, beanbag and, and a, a bit of paper. And, and that was how I finally got there. What had you tried before, though, that wasn't, how were you writing before that when it wasn't really guess, gelling? So I, I mean, so my first book, which was a book I wrote years ago on mediumship, and that was kind of, 
I don't want to say easy, but it wasn't difficult. It was, I, I basically wrote a giant bullet pointed list and then built out every one of the bullets. It was, hmm. it was, you know, my background is in corporate communications. So I'm kind of used to, right, here are your key messages. Now build them out into something, craft something from it. So basically that's what I did with the first book. And it was like, oh, this is easy. This is fine. So I tried to do that again. <laughs> did not work. And then tried to, would try to kind of, I did the whole thing of, I'll get up early in the morning. I'm not a morning person, so that isn't good. I'll get up early in the morning and have an hour at it every day. I will, on a weekend, I will just sit in front of the laptop. I will sit in the tent in the back garden with the laptop. And I quite quickly realized that, first of all, the laptop was not the way to write this book. Mm. This book could not come through. Uh, I mean, obviously I typed it up eventually, but it could not come through in that form it needed to be written it almost it felt like it, it felt like a different type of birthing process I think in that it, it physically came out of my body as I was sitting there and it's only as I'm sitting here I'm realizing that sitting on a beanbag yeah is is massively aligned with with the labor <laughs> process isn't it how interesting anyway, you needed yeah. Alison there <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> um, so I tried I tried that I tried taking myself away I, I go to a cabin in the woods once or twice a year I tried going off to a cabin in the woods and it just wouldn't come nothing would and I think if I look back at it now actually it's because the book I'm looking at it if I'm glaring behind the computer it's because I'm looking at it the book I remember when I first signed with with Unbound one of the things you do Nicola is you you give us access to a meditation that is to, to meet the spirit of your book to meet the energy of your book and I remember meeting her and going whoa she's powerful no wonder I can't just juggle her into an hour a day no wonder I can't just fit her around everything else like she demands attention because this book is is a sheer force and so I kind of try I kept trying to coax her into my life to be like oh you can fit in here oh you can fit there and she was just like no 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 this will not work until I just everything else stopped other than Chits Creek and I just <laughs> had to sit and focus on her and let her kind of let her take the wheel so interesting yeah I think it's helpful to hear what didn't work as well, yeah. like as, as it is to hear about what really did work. Thanks, Karen. Who'd like Should to go, go next? Yeah, Should go, I go next? next. Yeah. Go oh, next. gosh. Honestly, I think I could write a book on how not to write a book. <laughs> Maybe we should do that. <laughs> uh, well, first, it wasn't the book I started writing. I started writing a book, very sensible book about breastfeeding. And then I would get into a bit of a meditative state, just like quiet, I'd get into my heart space. And I would, it was like, it was just um, a channel writing, if you like, you know, it was just, it was just automatic writing. And then I'd go back to it and read it and think, this isn't a book about breastfeeding, is it? <laughs> so then I just thought, all right, you know what? I'm just going to trust this. So I'll just, and actually the first part, which was the channeled messages really from the spirit babies was, was, was an easy part, but it was like, I'm a midwife. I cannot take spirit baby messages to the world. They, they think I'm crazy. So then I thought, okay, I have to put a bit of my experience then as a midwife. And that sort of began to slow me up a bit more then. And then I was thinking, right, okay, I think that's finished. And then it was like, I don't think people are going to believe what I've written. <laughs> so then I went on this journey of research. I was trying to research lots of the things that were written in the book. So if someone had said to me, you're going to be writing a book, which is fully channeled from the baby spirit realm, and it's fully referenced, mm. I just wouldn't have done it. So it's like they gave it, so it was given to me in parts, but the part where I had to write about, you know, my own experience as a midwife and bringing all that together, and then the, bringing the research together, that was, that was really tough. And there were moments of just, I just can't do this. It's just too hard. Why was it so easy? And now it's so hard. And the things that I would say to people is, you know, just, just, just keep writing. Just don't worry about what it's going to come out like. Just keep writing and eventually it will come together, which is exactly what happened for me. And towards the end, I was really procrastinating because the worst bit is the reading it so many times over and over and over and over. <laughs> Every time you look at it, you think I've read that and there's a mistake. And, and then um, I actually asked somebody to help me with some energy work because I was really procrastinating. And I had worked through a lot of fears about this book. You know, this was not the book I was writing. And suddenly I was really going to be exposing myself as a midwife. I've turned the belief of, I can't possibly do this. They'll strike me off. It's a terrible thing for a midwife to bring out. It's irresponsible. And I've turned it on its head to, well, actually what if it needs to be a midwife for it to be taken seriously. Okay. So I've completely turned it on its head, but it's been a lot of work. <laughs> so the writing practice was very bitty. You know, weeks I'd write, weeks I wouldn't write for. Then four months would go by, but I was really beating myself up. Come on, you should be writing this book. So then I just thought, I just have to, let, when I feel like writing, I write. 
And when I don't feel like writing, I don't write. And I had to take the pressure off and just think it will come when it's ready. But the procrastination at the end was really tough. And then I worked with somebody who said, what about if you just do 20 minutes a day? That's all we're asking, 20 minutes. So I did three days of 20 minutes, then it was an hour, then it was four hours. And before I knew it, I was kind of doing editing of like 12 hours a day, with short yeah. breaks. So it was, so honestly, how not to write it, but, well, you've but done it worked it. and I finished it. Perfect. <laughs> it is perfect, even though it didn't feel like it at the time. Yeah. And yeah. I love you mentioned that piece, how you reframed like, oh, I can't write this, I'm a midwife. And then it's like, no, this is exactly why I'm yeah. being called to write this. And it makes me think, like, in with Unbound Writing, one of the prompts that we use, or to reframe that, like, oh, who am I to do this? We yeah. actually ask that question, like, yeah, who are you to do this? Why are you the perfect person to do this? And, like, that really illustrates that point. So, yeah. yeah. It really is such a journey. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Alison. <laughs> Dine, quite the journey. Quite the journey. <laughs> I'm totally resonating with that. <laughs> Yeah, so I was well. First of all, I was I was writing a completely different book, um, Samskaras, which is yogic speak for entanglements and blockages and things of your prana. And um, but uh, what happened was, and you know, saboteur the saboteur was which I always knew because I used to write um, poetry or kind of like little short pieces all through my life. So I've got lots and lots of old journals and things like that so I knew that I could get away with so much but then it was like committing to this bigger uh these bigger chunks and uh, of committing to speaking really speaking and um and then so the saboteur came in big time and uh, I literally was like a battle and it's weird because one of the samskaras that I was going to write about became the the totality of this thing that I've ended up writing about so it's like the biggest one kind of you know and um so (laughs) it has been a bit of a battle but I'm winning because now um so I was writing in small bits and then as uh, you know as you said as in like sometimes two or three weeks and it'd be like no there's almost like a force field around it and I couldn't I just couldn't yet I couldn't also walk away either Mm. I couldn't say oh well obviously not for me or anything like that there was this literal you know like magnetism and um yeah so and then but gradually now I'm now that's at the center and I'm really speaking and even some of the things that I wrote in the beginning I thought I probably won't put that in but I just need to write it and I'm thinking I am bloody well putting that in and (laughs) you know it's like really um it's just the whole thing has evolved and it's made me very happy because now I'm flowing and Mm. uh but it has taken a couple of years it doesn't yeah. have to be like that for everybody, but that's my particular thing. And um, I suppose as far as a writing practice is, I, I, because I've allowed it to be the centre, I'm now no longer worried about exact amounts of time that I'm doing it. I know that it's that I'm in right relationship with it now rather than it. Uh, yeah. I love that. So as the book has shifted, and like Karen, you spoke to this, but I'm interested, like Alison and Diana, as your book has shifted from what you thought it was at the beginning to what it became or what it's becoming, has like the way you write, has that changed as well? Like I know you spoke about like the little chunks and maybe it's expanded, but you know, has it shifted from, um, I don't know, even things like writing by hand to typing or vice versa? Like have there been any shifts there as the book has changed? Or not? Uh, well, towards the end, I started to do more on the computer. So initially, I did a lot of writing. I couldn't do it. It was, it was just like Karen said about it just wouldn't come through. It had to be a pen and paper mm. because that's how it flowed out. It doesn't flow in the same way at the computer. But when I was doing the re- finishing it up and doing the research parts, that was actually easier to do on the computer, moving yeah. the words around, and that that was easier. But it was the the the, the automatic write. It's like that's how it had to flow out that part so even when you thought it was a book about breastfeeding you were writing by hand and then that's how it just started to come yeah that's how it came through and then by the end when I was bringing it all together there was more doing it straight onto the computer because also I thought gosh you're writing it by hand then you're putting it all you know it's a a lot of work I mean I really all credit to anyone who writes a book I mean it's really quite a lot of your life is taken up 
So yeah, and I had totally good. underestimated yeah. how that would be. Just write yeah. a book. Yeah, right. Good luck. <laughs> you friend of mine finished. <laughs> yeah, yeah a friend of mine finished writing and submitted her book last week. And um, she sent me a message, and I can't remember the exact words, but it was something along the lines of trying to craft genius to a deadline and within a word count is very, very difficult, and I don't really know how I've managed it. And I exactly. just thought, I read it and thought, it's so true, isn't it? Because we have this idea of what a book should be, whatever our book is going to be. We also have this overarching idea of what a book will be. And you read, I'm sure, you know, all of us are probably, to some extent, voracious readers, which is why we write. Yeah. And so you thought there's a part of you who's like, yeah, this will be easy. It's just putting one word after the other. It'll be fine. <laughs> it's not. It's it's and that, I don't say that to put anybody off because it's one of the most it is the most rewarding thing I think I've ever done. But and, I, you know, I'll, I'll do it again and, and we'll all do it again, I'm sure. But it's not as easy as one word after the next. That's for sure. <laughs> no. Well, I feel it can be, like you said, with your first book, Kara, like when they're saying it's quite straight, it's you know, it's just like, oh, I'm going to share this information and you can just write something and put it out there. It's when we're writing something that really comes from that unbound place, like from our soul, like from, you know, it's the that like true essence of what we're meant to be sharing. That's when it can feel, it can feel more challenging. Like we have to go to our edges to actually bring it to bring it through yeah but to do that to a deadline is quite tricksy because <laughs> books those books don't want to have a deadline <laughs> yeah it's so funny because I had a date in my head I said I was definitely going to be ready it's definitely going to be ready on this day and then it wasn't ready and I was so disappointed it was a couple of weeks after that date and of course Nicola was like yeah well come on it's ready and I'm thinking goodness me I'm a midwife why did I think an estimated date was going to work <laughs> It's never worked. It always go beyond. You know, what was I think? So it, it has felt like a birthing in some ways, a really, really long <laughs> labour. That's so funny because you actually write about that in your book as well, about yeah. the dates. <laughs> so <laughs> I mean, Dino, how about for you? Because like well, your I process... I, Yeah, I had to write through lots of different voices, lots of mm. through lots of different conditioning, educated, for better or worse, ways of you know, language, uh, to find the true language that was like a mixture of everything and um, and something that I was actually wanting to say. Um, so that I found that quite, um, uh, that was hard um, because I had to keep persevering because I was thinking, right, I want to say this. And then when I written it, I thought, oh, but I haven't said it. You know, what was that? And then gradually, it's like chipping away. I start that voice or that writing started to come out and I'm I have done it all on the computer because I like to be able to change everything around and um that's probably or might be because I also do I'm doing drawings for mine and so I've got that contact with color and paper and ink and everything already and um so that might be what satisfies that and I I never did stuff on the computer before it's always a little books you know writing but um, I'm finding because it's such a big thing I can move it around easily uh, if I've got lots of different bits of paper well for instance is something that looks a bit like that yeah <laughs> get a little bit <laughs> like where was that where is it? it's on the computer like oh there it is <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> that pile is very definitely familiar there's like you know you think it's very neat wouldn't it just put it all in one a4 folder and just write yeah. it you know it's like it doesn't happen like oh i've got some insight i'll just write this here while i'm sitting on the yeah. bus or <laughs> you know i've got post-it notes at the moment and i'm right <laughs> just all over the place it's like i need to get this all in one place yeah. How, one of the keys with unbound writing one of the kind of practices or like principles is to bring pleasure into the writing process. And we've talked a lot about the challenges. <laughs> I wonder if there are ways that you have more, have you made your writing practice more pleasurable? So I would often take myself off to the woods or I would sit in nature and sit on the grass and just see what wanted to, to come yeah, at the beginning, just see what wanted to to come through so it really meant that I did get back with nature because mm -hmm. I found it was easy to write out I don't know I seemed to have better connection when I was out when I was outside so I, I kind of went on little day trips around the place thinking oh, I need to write so I need to go away for a day or two or an afternoon <laughs> that was fun yeah <laughs> and actually writing out in nature as well yeah. oh gorgeous yeah. 
yeah, yeah. love yeah. that thanks Alison yeah. I had a daily trip to the woods as well it wasn't I didn't write there because I obviously had had Kelly with me, but I would go out to the woods every morning and just be like, okay, this is this is the opening up, this is the connection. And then often we we ended the day with another trip to the woods as well. So often during that period of time that I was really intently writing, we would kind of book or I would bookend the day with trips to the woods just just to to like you say, Alison, just to connect, I think, just to be in with nature. Would you notice like ideas coming, yeah, when you're out or yeah, yeah. Massive. That happens for me as well. Yeah, yeah, me, me too. I, I, I've been writing. I'm quite close to nature here, which is quite good. But I have been taking my laptop out and just finding little spots. But also in cafes, and if, if I hear like you know little sound bites of other people all around me, it kind of like some sometimes stimulates and um, mm-hmm. sometimes even synchronistically kind of starts to all weave in together. So I've, I found that really enjoyable. Um, and no matter how noisy it is, it's still doesn't it's almost as though that's giving me energy rather than mm. distracting me so I found that very pleasurable yeah well that's interesting mm. yeah because I kind of feel like I need silence when I'm writing like, I don't even have music on um but I will like always kind of go out in nature and go for a walk like before writing if I can but then there have been times when I've been writing in cafes and yeah, I guess it is, it does kind of spark off a different quality when you're in that yeah. environment. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the writing environment. Like, yeah, obviously at times, like maybe going out into nature or cafes, but like your writing environment at home, what is that like? Is there anything kind of special or are there any special ways that you set up your space for writing? Well, when I was doing the, you know, automatic writing, when I realised where it was coming, because I got to have to get very, like, where's this information coming from? And then that set me on a whole journey of, well, what is this? Who are the, where is this coming from? And so by the end, I would like a, like a little candle and I would have a little unicorn because that's how I sort of identified, it felt like the magic of the, of what was coming out on the page. So I would do that each time. And it was quite a mess around me. So I'd have to clear it a bit beforehand. But often it was towards the end, it was, you know, there was lots, when I was finishing up, there were lots of activity in the house, which was a bit off-putting at times. Yeah. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, but so yeah, I used to light the candle. I just, to, I don't know, it kind of centered me a little bit as well when I was writing at home. Love yeah. That. yeah. But it wasn't a specific room or anything. I was kind of in the hub of the house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which is maybe why there was some delays because it's like will you lot just be quiet and (laughs) let me do this but this is the thing isn't it like how often do we get like that per what we would think is like the perfect writing conditions where there's nothing going on in our lives like every you know we've got a whole place to ourselves it just doesn't happen so we just have to kind of find the best way with what we have which it sounds like you absolutely did Alison yeah. And I mean, I live on my own, so I do have that, that, you know, I don't have that distraction. And to be honest, I would have, I think I would have relished having, having more noise around. There were times when I really, there were times when I would quite often pack up and go to my mum and dad's because I'd just be like, I just, I just need somebody. I just need something around. So it's not just me, Kelly, and this, this book I need. But I used to, um, I echo the, the candle piece. I used to have a particular candle that I burned every time I, um, I sat down to write. And, um, I think I, I finished it around Christmas time. So the book came out in November and I finished it around Christmas time. So that felt quite, quite powerful. And there's a particular album on Spotify that I would listen to as I was kind of getting myself ready. That's all sort of light language. And, and crystal balls and things and I would just have the music the candle kind of sit down and, and center for a few minutes and just get in that in that space of of connection and then go um it really it felt like a bit of a ritual process well it was a bit of a ritual process every day yeah I remember interviewing Lisa Lister once about writing it was for the magical portal project which I ran a couple of years ago with different writers and that's one thing she said. She said, we almost have to trick ourselves into writing sometimes and we just have to ritualise the shit out of it. <laughs> and she's like talking about like the music and the candles, like whatever you need to kind of trick yourself into actually sitting down and writing. So I love that. Oh. How about you, Dino? Yeah, so I, well, I've got my um my my corner, which is which is the corner that had the, fer- the force field around it that I couldn't... Um, come towards and is in my spare room and at one point the door slammed shut and a whole bunch of stuff that had been completely quiet 
had fallen across it and I couldn't even get, I had to push the door to get, it was really, you know, it's like poltergeist stuff, but now I'm in here. And um, so I've got my, all my drawings there. Oh, wow. Um, for wow. the book. And so I've got this real positive feedback loop. And that's what gets, I just only have to sit in this chair and kind of go like that and go, ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> so I've got, got it all going on in the, that's yeah, that. <laughs> I've really managed to get, we've spoken about that kind of poltergeist energy when Dino's going into cafes and there's all sorts of things happening. So oh, yes. kind of creative energy is causing mayhem. <laughs> yeah it's really funny yeah let's talk about some of the sabotage okay okay this is getting ridiculous you know <laughs> oh I love how you've moved through it I mean I'm a big fan of writing in bed actually if I can be lying down then that's perfect <laughs> with a notebook or a laptop yeah yeah I do a lot of writing so I, I just not... thought of something else I did actually and um I would just record it on my phone so I'd talk into it, record it on the phone, and then it was written, and it was easier to just transfer it from the notes on my phone onto yeah. my computer. That's a great yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, I forgot I did that, but I did that at times because I, I did find it quite a chore to write it all, and then, and of course, it wasn't all written in the way it was ended up being. It was like bits here and bits there, and moving it around and shifting it so many times. But that I did do that quite a bit actually talking. When it, something came through, I if I was like, oh, I've got five minutes, I'll just see what's come through. I would just record it, and then I would because then the words were written. I could just transfer it over. So yeah, I forgot I'd done. But yeah. yeah, thanks for saying that because that's a really helpful point. I quite often do that if I'm out like on a walk or if I haven't got a notebook with me, I'll just kind of and an idea comes through because I've learned. Mm -hmm. I kind of always think used to think, oh, it's fine, I'll remember it like word for word when I get back, and I never do. <laughs> and I always trust that you know whatever needs to come back will come. But yeah, it's helpful just to be able to like do a quick voice note and get that down. Yeah. And I suppose that could work really well for people if they've got a busy family. You get five exactly. minutes just to speak into it, you know, because it does take time to write it and then write it up again, you know, on the computer. Joe Gifford, who's one of our authors and also one of our team members, that's the way pretty much she wrote like her her book Brilliant Sunbox with voice notes because there was just so much going on. Like first thing in the morning when she was getting ready, she would just write record voice notes. And yeah, that was pretty much pretty much it. So yeah, it's a really great way to approach it. I want to just talk about like the cyclical nature of your writing practice. Like I think you've all kind of mentioned how like your writing practice would change and shift over time and there would be periods of time when nothing was happening and then other times where you would come back to your book again that's another key aspect of the unbound writing approach that we kind of allow that rather than like trying to force the writing but I just wonder how you manage that like the times when it feels like nothing's coming how is that for you well it can be incredibly frustrating really frustrating I've put the time aside for this and nothing's coming or it's not flowing or it's I mean it, you know there were times I just thought oh why am I doing this why this is really hard this is like the hardest thing I've ever done <laughs> oh and then I'd have to just walk away and then it would you know and then maybe an hour later you try again and something would come so it was trusting it, really, I think. Mm. And for me, it definitely was. It felt like, you know, three months on, three months off. There yeah. were times, it was, you know, the cycles were as big as that. I yeah. can't be bothered. I don't want to. I can't be bothered sort of thing. Um, trust is such a key, such a key piece. Yeah. And like probably yeah. the hardest piece of the whole process. <laughs> yeah. And that feeling of not being able to control it, which is always the difficult thing, isn't it? And not, not I couldn't see the end. It's like, would this mm. ever end? How much more do I have to put into this? Will it ever end? Yeah. And then eventually it does end. Exactly. You're proof of it. Yeah. <laughs> you've got that proof. And it's a lovely feeling when you've finished. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Thanks, Alison. <laughs> uh, so I, I, in the beginning, I was struggling with my um, mm. cycles a lot. Um, so when I would have a creative uh, sort of surge, I quite often couldn't do anything at all and so that was very frustrating um uh and i would be in a battle and in, in about cycles went round it was almost so each time 
something softened and now and now that's I'm past that now and and uh but and and that allows me now to trust when it's mm-hmm. quiet because then I know it's brewing or incubating yeah. or something, you know so um that's that's good good now because I'm not I'm no longer in the battleground of initiating this whole process yeah so helpful to hear like each of you speaking about it as well because I think it helps to build that sense of trust for anyone like listening mm. or watching it's like oh okay like this is this is a normal part of the process yeah how about you I think it's for me it's one to an extent I think I still struggle with you know I still I've actually realized recently that I've, I've stopped tracking when writing flows easily whether that be for a book whether that be for a blog post whatever it is compared to when it doesn't and actually that for me is so helpful throughout the year throughout the month because there there are such clear patterns and it's such a mine of well I found it for me such a mine of information to keep on top of that to track that so that I know when to you know as you said Alison when to just kind of go yeah not today today is not the day today Mm -hmm. is a day that I will go and do something else or or you know whatever it may be it's just that kind of stepping back on the days that no it's it's not going to work today and then leaning really leaning in on the days that it is and almost kind of hunkering down and going right let's go we've got 12 hours we can just the flow is going to be there let's go with it <laughs> it's still and I'm saying this I think this is perhaps why I put my hand up to be involved with this unknowingly that I think this is something I need to remember right now it's something I always need to remember that that's that's the way I work I would argue to to some extent or another that's the way we all work We've yeah. just been told that we don't. When you were tracking it, can you remember any particular patterns, like times when it you yeah. felt most um, able to write? So I am. Um, I tend to be really, um, really good at writing on days kind of two, three, four, five of my cycle. When I'm kind of deep in the cave, I'm just like, no one talks to me. I'm writing. Thank you. But when I'm ovulating, mm-mm, just do, I'm too busy. As, as you said, um, Dan, I, I'm too busy. Kind of I'm out. I'm doing this. I, I, yeah. The creative energy is too much and I can't pin it down to actually write it. I need it's almost like I'm trying to catch it. Yeah. And then but through the year as well, I always remember um, Lisa Lister talking about how you know her writing process was always winter. She would go into a, a cave in winter and write a book. Mm-hmm. I mean, she, I, I guess she probably still does. And given that I could write so much more easily when I bleed, I was like, well, that all makes sense. Yeah. It, it correlates surely does not make sense does not work for me so my birthday is my birthday is at the start of February it's just after in bulk and I find that my best time for being creative over long stretches is kind of in bulk to about about now-ish in bulk to yeah. sort of May June-ish that's a really good time for me to, to to be creative and the other times it's there's just stuff there's there's stuff kind of percolating and there's stuff incubating and I just have to let it flow a little bit so yeah mm-hmm. massively and it's it's almost those cycles within cycles as well you know it's because I'm not going to wait until next February to to knuckle down and write the next book you know I'm not like oh damn oh, I missed my, I missed my window yeah. <laughs> but equally you know that there are times when there are times when I, I do have to just go out this month this is not going to work so we'll just put a we'll put a pause on it till next month it's fine we'll focus on something else yeah it's a really fine balance I think yeah yeah it is it is and again I think it can all like shift and change over time and also Mm -hmm. with different books and whatever we're creating so yeah it's interesting listening to you there Karen because I thought oh maybe I was in a cycle but I didn't realize it and it seems that I of the two years that it took me to write it I mean obviously it didn't take me two years to write it I was a lot of gaps not doing anything but it was the November to February time where I seemed to be more creative so mm-hmm. but I hadn't thought about it until now when you just said it but oh that's so interesting isn't it so different time to you yeah 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 and when we talk about those gaps it's like oh when nothing's happening like there is always something happening that is all part of the process and like Dino you spoke to like to trust that something is brewing and even if that is for like a month or longer like once you're in process with your book like there is always something happening even if it's not like actively writing so I think that's a really that's kind of a helpful point kind of like we're coming towards the end of the conversation like we're talking about the writing practice but it's not all about like actually writing like the spaces in between are just as important as well I need to remind myself of that so that's why I'm saying it <laughs> there's also, been a lot of not... spaces in my current writing process I'm just it's mostly space right now <laughs> 
I try. And also, I mean, I'm certainly not, but you know, that, lots of people, that's that's their main job. They're writers. I was trying mm. to fit in along with everything else, working. And then there was COVID, you know, I was working really hard as a midwife during, you know, there was months, month, nothing. Because exactly. there was so much else going on in the world. So well, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Like I said, we haven't always got those perfect conditions to write no, it. So. No. Thank you all so much for sharing today, like what's worked for you and also what hasn't, because like I said, I feel that can be just as powerful. Before we go, it would be great to hear how people can connect with each of you. What's the best way for them to find out a little bit more? about the magic you're making in the world so on Facebook you'll catch me as Alison Shalou uh, baby spirit intuitive and healer and my Instagram is Alison Shalou dash or spirit baby communication fantastic she says yeah (laughs) that's how you'll get me and uh, just to end I'd just like to say just be kind to yourselves in the writing I love that yeah so important thanks Alison um I'm at Karen Roundtree on pretty much everything. Um, Facebook, Instagram, even LinkedIn nowadays. I'm dabbling over there. Ooh. Or um, KarenRoundtree.com is the website. And thank you so much for this conversation. It's been incredibly nourishing. Thank you, Nicola. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for being part of it, Karen. Thank you. Dine. And yeah, I'm on Facebook, Dine. I think I'm on Instagram as well, but I haven't been posting as much as I possibly could. So yeah, Facebook uh, for now and then. I think I'll pro- I'll try to be more uh, media um, visible. I find I do find it hard, um, but that's yeah. And I'm going to change my website. So I have I think the Facebook thing is probably the because it's just the the name that's on here, Dino Tracy. So easy. That's one, that's one, yeah. We could have a whole other conversation about social media and yeah. writing and all of that. So we will. Really well. <laughs> like you're triggered at the moment. I know. Like you didn't know we I had to feel, do it. I could feel some shame around like not being on Instagram enough, and it's like it's totally like like pick what works for you. You don't have to be on all the things. I know. It's but I mean you should go on sometime, shouldn't you? Well, <laughs> no. Overrated. Be unbound, Danny. Be, be unbound. Exactly. Exactly. So, that'll be my message then. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you'll find me there. Maybe not. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. Well, thank you all so much. I've loved having this conversation. And for those watching or listening, like we'd love to hear from you kind of what what the conversation sparked off for you and if you've got any questions about creating a writing practice that feels good for you that kind of enables you to write your book please do share them below this episode but um yeah we'll see you again soon for another episode of unbound women thanks everyone thank Thank you you. bye